introduction to act to the benefit of positive finance. Now let's talk about the emergence of positive finance. We'll have players in investment or in, on the stock exchange, the chairman of Euronext, and Stefan Buschner, chairman and uh, CEO and chairman of the managing board of Euronext. <coughs> Philippe Swati, CEO of Mirova. So, we'll talk for 10 minutes about positive finance. When we talk about finance, we've been asking ourselves whether there are any positive values in finance. And this debate shows that yes, indeed. So starting with you, Stefan Bouchner. Well, finance can't be either an enemy or a friend. It's just a tool. Over the last thousand years, finance has helped sort the problems of people who have a lot of money and no ideas, and help sort out the problem of those who have lots of ideas and no money. This is what finance has been about since uh, pharaohs in Egypt. But the image deteriorated over the last decades, hasn't it? Yes, of course. We have an image problem, that's true, and we need to re-establish a social deal between finance and society. We need everyone to understand what money can be used for. But it's not finance that translates the value of a society. Finance crystallizes the values of a society. You know, in politics, people say that Politicians are looking at the ballot box. Statesmen look at the results. Politicians look at people, citizen, uh, statesmen look at citizens. If you only look on the short term, that's fine. You can allocate resources very smartly, or you have a medium-term vision of growth, and then you have to work in a different time space altogether. And this is what failed. It's the social deal, social, yeah, the, the, the deal in society using finance to support long-term growth. When you look at uh, periods when you had uh, social consensus around finance. You had recent years with the Communist Party, 25% of votes in the elections. This was the post-war reconstruction, and society was quite comfortable with the way capitalism was working. Yes, because we had to rebuild the country, and we had to rebuild housing and infrastructures, and we all understood that we couldn't do that without money. And before that, it was before World War One, between 1870 and 1914, when we completed the Hosman works, we expanded our colonies, we built schools and high schools in every village, we expanded colonial infrastructures, we had the Fresine channels, we funded the development of Russia, we developed mines. All this in a country where uh, uh, savings uh, were used to finance all this, even in a time when we had anarchists. So what do we lack to restore this social deal? Don't you think that citizens need more sustainable investments? Well, the situation is not all that different. We have huge needs of investment, and we know where we need to invest today. I mean, we have an economic, technological, and environmental transition that we need to finance. And this requires colossal investment, and these are long-term investments. So we need to reconnect financial instruments to that. And we also need uh, finance needs to work on what it does as well. 
and finance needs to become aware of its role and of the fact that its role is not totally neutral, depending on how finance is going to act, we are going to embark on such and such a route. Miroba, you're part of the BPCE group. You set up this fund a few years back. What's your core business? Well, we are a fund that was set up a few years back. We specialize in green finance or responsible finance. Uh, there are many words, but what they mean is quite simple. We invest on the long term, that's our horizon, and we systematically take into account the social and environmental impact of the projects we're going to finance. And what, what do you finance? Well, all sorts of projects, because funding is needed for all sorts of assets. So we finance companies, that's crucial. There is a need, a considerable need for innovation, and this is funded through equity, bonds, etc. And we also fund projects, infrastructure projects, for energy transition, for clean transportation, for healthcare, for education, everywhere in the world. And those investors who work with you, do they believe in that or do they think, well, it's kind of trendy and there is money to be made there? Because we talked about the gap between short term and long term. So is it just because it's trendy? No, I think at the moment we have an opportunity. For quite a while, we've opposed ethics and business or responsible investment and performance. And you thought if you invest in a, an ethical company, you won't have such a great return on investment. But today there is a true economic mutation that requires understanding the long term and economic and social impacts because all these economic and social impacts are at the heart of these of this economic mutation. Of course, there is also the energy mutation and how we face uh, uh, demographic growth and smart cities and all this requires money and requires money to be profitable. Stefan Buschner, Paris, Euronext has great ambitions. Could it one day become the capital of finance? We know that you have ambitions within the framework of the Brexit. I'll be slightly provocative saying that we're already a global capital in positive finance because 57% of our GDP is transformed into public spending. So when you take 57% of all wealth created and decide to turn it into public spending, it means that you've deputized people and allowed them to take money in a rather violent way, and you tell them, take me, take away most of what I earn and redistribute everything or reinvest everything you can. So we are in a paradise of, in a heaven, of positive finance without knowing it. No, that's that's a fact. That's a reality. That's very important because after all, what would be the optimum for f positive finance but to entrust, democratically entrust people f with reallocating the wealth. We allocate 42 to 45 billion euros per year to servicing our debt. So that's money we take from people paying VAT and that we pay to people who have too much money. 45 billion euro is what we spend for <coughs> kindergarten, primary school, high school, and junior high. So we said, okay, we made a choice. Well, 
take on debt and to pay for this. If interest rates were to increase 1%, this would cost us 18 billion euros more, i.e. the cost of all our police forces. So we never talk about these decisions that no one discusses about. But the first decision of resource allocation that we've all made together is to allocate 65 billion euros to developing human capital, 45 billion for school education, plus 15, 20 billion for higher education and research. Then there is debt, 45 billion, and then 35 billion for defense. So we have 850 million more or less our and one of our general resigns and everything changes, but that's the way it is. Now, as preferences in the world change and the idea of doing things on the long term to reallocate investment and earmark investments for new technology, for clean technologies, that generated green bonds and Paris was a very favorable environment for that. And the whole challenge of positive finance, of green bonds, etc., is not to turn it into the Islamic finance of liberals that would have values but would not provide yield and liquidity. I think we are becoming su successful doing that. So this brings me back to my initial question. Is it a trend is because we said companies were doing brainwashing. No, 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 it's not just a trend because what's at the heart of finance is the pricing of time. This is what we can do with financial theory. We can give value to time and yield to time. And if we were to talk about to talk about positive finance, that would mean allocating resources for long-term return. And when Norwegian sovereign funds and all the financial scouts of this world say you want to invest in carbonated economy, what they say is I'm going to price in, via, in my investment the negative externalities linked to this activity. The true cost of investing in a carbon generating uh, activity, well, the problem is that what you're showing to me in your P&L does not reflect the actual cost of your activity. So I'm not going to invest in that. So those who are going to invest will have less offering, they will increase the price, and this prov will be providing a better return, which will take into account the actual real price of this business. So same question, Philip. Do you feel in your investors investing through Mirova Is there this some um, kind of lefty liberal attitude investing in trendy things, or are they willing to invest on the long term? Well, what Stefan said, when you talk about pricing externalities, what does it mean? It means you carry out a risk analysis, and the risk of having carbon in your portfolio is a genuine risk for investors. And even central bank governors say that today. And they say, well, tomorrow the price of carbon is going to be worth something. So when you uh, take stocks of an oil company, if you don't think about it, the risk is to lose money.
in Europe are doing the same thing. And startups are exactly the same thing as freighting a ship that would cross the Atlantic in the 17th century. So it's basically, it's quite simple. And can be understood by the French population. Okay, thank you very much indeed to both of you. Thank you to both. I will walk you backstage, but.